This is going to be your secret to preventing powdery mildew in your garden this year. Let's talk about the science behind it. Hello, plant people. How are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. That means I take all that science and apply it to all things plants. In today's video, I'm going to give you the ultimate solution to powdery mildew that's organic, but still very effective. And you can actually make at home for very little money. But first, I want you to hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. The thumbs up is immensely helpful to the channel. I always forget to say it. So I do want to add that in the front of the video. I'm going to be like grand stuff in here right now and just beg. I'm going to beg for the thumbs up and I will insert some very cute photos or video of my dogs as a thank you. Let's get on with the video. So the reality is that powdery mildew can show up pretty much anywhere. I had someone send me a video over on Instagram that was literally powdery mildew on salvia. So it's fungus that looks powdery white powder is what it looks like it can be really intense looking or it can be relatively inconspicuous so one of the best ways to actually prevent against powdery mildew is to use some precaution so if you have a plant that currently is suffering from powdery mildew you do not want to compost these leaves you immediately want to discard them the spores actually overwinter in either the mulch or the compost depending on your situation so if you have a plant currently infected you want to remove all the mulch from that area and the leaves and discard do not compost this stuff because again, it's gonna overwinter and it's gonna show up year after year in compounds. So the next question would be, does this actually affect my plant? And the answer is it depends on the severity. A couple leaves, a little white dabbling every so often is not going to harm the plant. However, if the plant is fully covered, it will affect the level of photosynthesis that can take place and therefore the overplant and the harvest. So you will want to treat it. Not to mention, you want to stop it from spreading to the rest of your leaves so you can still use that compost for fertilizer in the next season. So you may be wondering what exactly is in this cup, and that is pure whey. So this is when I am going to redirect you to my second channel where I'm doing more homesteading vibesque type stuff, and I actually make this from scratch. If you don't want to make pure whey from scratch, you can just use milk or yogurt diluted in water and then spray it onto your plants. However, obviously the concentration of whey protein will be lower in those environments. So if you want to get your best bang for your buck, I encourage you to make your own cheese, which literally takes about 30-ish minutes. And it gives you really good results for your garden. To mention, you can use this in the compost as a compost accelerator and getting rid of any harmful uh, powdery mildew spores that may exist. Now, if you've watched my entire series on DIY hacks and that sort of thing, you probably already have a sense for the fact that I'm not much for the DIY home hack ingredient type stuff, only because generally it doesn't work very effectively. However, when it comes to whey in particular, the pure whey I'm talking about today, there is enough data and science to back this up. Let's get into that now. So one study I looked at actually used an electron spin resonance. I had to get that right, otherwise the comment section would eat me alive for it to look at various different forms of milk compounds. So this means fired milk being sprayed on plants, natural milk, and even just the pure whey formula that we looked at here today to determine what exactly was going on when it was applied to powdery mildew in particular. So the data here is actually very surprising. It showed that components that were exposed to light combined with milk products showed a reduction or complete decrease in the powdery mildew, which seems shocking, but there is some reason for why. It turns out that when milk is exposed to light, it causes oxygen radicals. What this means is basically very destructive chemistry to fungi. So in particular, the whey was causing the hyphae of nicator to collapse and also damage the conidia within the treated leaves. So this happened all within 24 hours after application. And I'll insert some photos of what each one of these organelles, I guess you could say, of fungi look like. So it turns out that hydrogen peroxide, which is kind of the second to using whey, didn't 
perform with the same results and only showed effectiveness in one result. So hydrogen peroxide in particular was able to damage the hyphae, but not the canidia. And they found out through further studies that it was actually the lactoferrin within the way that caused the canidia to basically explode. This is kind of like the antimicrobial portion of milk that just naturally occurs. Plants that were applied with 20 to 30 percent whey protein saw a decrease in the actual powdery mildew and that means that anything milk product wise will work however products that were applied with a hundred percent whey showed a slight sensitivity to phototoxicity meaning if you are using the full whey in the presence of really intense light in sun you may want to reduce that to about 50 percent so this concoction in a spray bottle 50 50 will do you just fine however if you're using milk or any sort of dairy product that's not pure whey i would encourage you to just use full strength and this includes the expired stuff when should you actually start applying this stuff some people are already starting to see some powdery mildew formation dependent on their zones and there's a reason for this it comes down to gdus and the number of units accumulated some zones are a little farther ahead than us here in zone three so i decided to actually look up the data on exactly when powdery mildew becomes an epidemic in your garden as characterized by the fda the temperatures have to be between 70 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit, which translates to 21 to 29 degrees Celsius. It has to be maintained for six hours or more at a time, and it has to last for three days in a row. However, temperatures above 95 degrees Fahrenheit or 35 degrees Celsius, Celsius for 12 hours continuous often stop infestation. <laughs> Sounds bizarre. So if you have that min-max thermometer that I showed you guys in a previous video when I was talking about cold frames and growing in those colder months, you may want to look at that to determine what your mins and your maxes are. And if you are maintaining those mins and maxes for long enough in the range that powdery mildew needs to survive in to have it show up. If this is happening and you have powdery mildew in your garden before and you maybe haven't removed the mulch, you're worried it's in your soil, your potting soil, or your compost, start applying now. That will help prevent them from even festering and showing up and ultimately be a win-win for you. However, if you're unsure and maybe you just composted some stuff last year that had powdery mildew and you want to ensure that the issue doesn't progress in the year following as you harvest that compost, feel free to add that whey to your compost itself as it's baking in hopes of suppressing those pores and hopefully killing off any hyphae or formations that are happening based on those temperature designations that I just gave you. So I hope this helps you guys out. If there's any other fungi, disease, or pest science you would like to hear about, please let me know in the comments down below. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!